Hello and welcome back. Here is the drawing that <clears throat> we did in part one on the uh, Paintology channel and we're now on the Produce channel. So you should have followed this link and come here for the 10 GMT start time. And so let me quickly go through the resources again. Um, you should bookmark these pages are very important. Pentology.com, daily step-by-step -step video tutorials. And then click on that and the pink button. And then you'll come to this page and you'll see here, I've got two streams, which is where I show my live streams on a daily basis. And they're spread between the two channels because initially I started off doing a drawing on each, which I was able to do, but I needed to go away and finish the drawing, spend about half an hour, 40 minutes more to finish the drawing, then I realized I could just split the drawing, one drawing into two streams. I think that was much better. It also removed the, uh, removed the, uh, how do you call it, the um, workload on, on myself, because I got so many other things to do. So 22nd November, here it is, the Kean Valley by Ferdinand Hodler. This is a painting, you can see here, is hanging on the National Art Museum in London. And I decided to pick that in the stream part one we already did. Part two here in the Produce channel. We're on the Produce channel here. Yeah? I got confused, sorry, because I switched it around a short while ago. So now, let me show you the uh, some of the previous drawings of Fox. See, it goes all the way back, so you can see some of the completed drawings I've made on the phone. There it is. It's a realistic drawing of of a bobbin. Yeah, black and white. So many drawings. We had fun. My daughter and I had fun painting this Halloween scary spooky. Anyway, so that's the page you want to bookmark. The other one is paintology.quora.com. So please do follow me there. And you'll find I update that page on a daily basis with what's happening with paintology and all that. So you'll keep updated with what's going on. So please do follow me on that. And of course, you know, you need to subscribe to my channels. Give me supported. And then you need to also appreciate, I'm sure you do, that I'm doing this with no cost to you at all. How how often do you see an artist sit through two hours a day and give you free tutorials? Not many, I don't think. And so that's what I'm doing, purely for the purpose of my main aim is to get everyone to draw on their phone. I want to encourage everyone to draw on their phone. Reason being, is because they spend way too far, far too much time being a consumer of social information and not a doer. And that, I think, is mentally imbalanced because then they start talking trivial chit-chat and making, make, taking sides and all that nonsense. And then they get into, uh, you know, just heated debate for no reason at all, with no, no real substance behind it whatsoever. And then, uh, whereas you can take time out drawing, you know, have we, that's the opposite of exactly that. Our body, our mind has been designed to have some peace and quiet at times, apart from sleeping, of course, but during the day, Take some time out, you know, do some drawing, do some creativity. You'll find your mind wanders off into your own mindset. And then it's really, it's been proven that it's therapeutic and beneficial. So that's why I'm encouraging everyone to draw. And that's why I'm keeping it free for the time being. And, you know, everything's coming out of my pocket. Development, doing all this, putting up, you know, putting all my time in uploading video, maintaining two channels, and bringing you more changes to the app, 
release this. So let's go ahead and, uh, and try and finish this drawing. I was quite happy with the progress I made. So this is the reference image that we're trying to replicate, and this is what we got so far. And I'm quite reasonably happy, and I showed you tones, how tones make up a whole painting. So now you can see, and I'm thinking, how am I going to do the rest of the drawing? I mean, I could go on, continue to fill these lines in, which I will probably do, because since I'm teaching you, so go through this, these areas that you haven't touched. Remember, we went through quickly and see brush. So just go through it. You'll see that the composition of the painting changes as you do this. You know, fill the areas you've left behind. There's no, no reason not to do that, right? This adds more tones to it and gives it more realism. Let's go through it quickly. Pick the tones. Pick the tones of that region that's showing as white. Yeah, you can see all these little areas I've left behind. Just going to go through it quickly, and you do the same. Right. We did that because we were rushing it, wasn't that? But there's some large chunks of areas that we can fill in here. And then we can take another look at it and see what we need to do as the next step. Drawing is such a wonderful thing, I'm telling you, it's like... Your mind wanders off. You've got peace and quiet, you're not interacting with the rest of the world, debating on subjects, talking about trivialities, listening to trivialities, you know. I mean, I'm not saying all of the conversation are trivial. I'm just saying that it really doesn't help to be always on social. I've seen a lot of people on Facebook, social media, addicted. And now I'm seeing something else, which my daughter does, is being addicted to YouTube shorts. You know, but luckily, I can distract her by asking her to painting and drawing. You know, otherwise she'll be addicted to the phone. God knows what the next generation of people are going to be like. If we don't control them now. So if you've got the phone, you can do this. I would prefer to see people do this because they're, they are now in their own little world drawing and enjoying drawing. Right. I can speed up as well, you see. These areas that you can see here can speed up. The color picker. This is very similar to doing traditional, right? But I'm doing a semi... Remember I told you that when you go and see a traditional artist, 
I have a tendency to lay down primary bulk colors initially, right? And then they start doing the small tweaks, keep doing it until they get to the final beautiful drawing, right? Painting, drawing or painting. It's very easy. This is really the very similar techniques to what I'm doing with them, except that we have a, a high degree of control over the colors and tones. And I'm showing you this because I'm trying to teach you the methods of painting and drawing, which will rapidly increase your skills, art skills. Let's see here, I haven't touched these. So just pick the colors local to that area and you match some of these colors. So you haven't departed too much out of these colors, right? It's the same colors. And that's what makes the whole drawing process so much easier. All right, let's see what we've got here. Yes, look, we've done that bit, now we're going to do this. So now we're getting the essence, see, this the tones that make up the difference. Let's see. Look at these lines of trees. We know we have seen this whenever we've appreciated the majestic landscape of where we live. Look at this wonderful line of trees that he's created. And then there's another group of trees here also. So that's the whole thing that we're trying to grab. Look how quickly you can do this. Always pick the color picker. So I'm picking the exact color tones of what it should be. And then I sometimes go over the other re regions because I know I'm in that collection of colors. Just trying to capture the essence, and this seems to have done quite well. Look at this group of trees that are coming down really fast along that higher slope. Let's see where we are on that. See, we've not managed to do a lot. So now, now you can see the drawing process says, just keep going. It will tell you when you've reached a certain step in the drawing, you'll know what to do. That's why most beginners have got no one to tell them what the drawing step is, what they need to do next, because that's it. You know, that's all they know. And they need something that takes them 
some way, either through teaching or through their own passion, but not many people have the same keen desire to learn, like majority of these artists who you admire so much, have different mindset to most majority of people, and that's do you think these were taught to me, these skills? I had to acquire them through trial and error and through my desire to progress the skill set that I already had. You know, I'm sorry. So, if you don't have that mindset, unfortunately, majority don't. Because they're also in this world, it all seems to be based on. The speed of gratification, you know, instant gratification. Instant gratification, that's where we live. And the more we live in that, your expectations is instant gratification or leave it. And that's why some of the drawing like paint by numbers give you an example where you click a dot and then you get the color so you don't have to paint the area like in paintology you have to paint it and people like that method of just clicking and then they do that and but they're never going to learn drawing by clicking or clicking a number You're not going to learn drawing. Maybe you're saying, why well, waste all my time doing this? There's people who actually say that. Why well, waste my time doing all this when I can do? It's like a question I answered recently. Of someone who's saying, what's the point of drawing when you're going to do it? What's the point of drawing when it's going to be replaced? Well, then I'm thinking, what a cynical person and asked him, I guess you're not a practitioner of art. Well, obviously I'm not going to get a reply, because only practitioners of art will say, what's the point of drawing? They never answer that, ask that question, because the, the value of drawing and painting cannot be measured. You have to do it to appreciate it. What do you think I do this daily basis? You know, because I sort of I get so much benefit in terms of in terms of peace of mind, whatever, right? Let's see where we got to. Do we manage to cover all the areas? I wonder. Yes, let's see what it's not bad, is it? Now you can see there are other areas, like at the top of that mountain there, we can see, you can top that here, that, get this here, yeah. same colours, right, then we can go here, look at that, we've got something reasonably close, isn't it? but we're not there yet. You're probably thinking, how is he going to get beyond this to this, to this? Well, this is where your skill sets come. If you don't have the skills, a lot of you will say, I don't have the skills, therefore I'm not going any further. You know, that's like saying, I can't see the road beyond me where I've stopped, therefore I'm not going any further. You know, that's like saying, you know, when there's literally a road, but they just can't see it. Don't know if that makes sense, but that's that's what I'm saying right now. Anyway, so let's see. See where we captured all the colors. Look at the colors we captured. Now what we can do is, I'm wondering what we can do. And I'm wondering, because look at the different wonderful shades. I'm wondering if I should introduce another brush into this play here. 
because I used a brush, Meadow Haze Light. Let me try Haze Light. You know, this is where you need to experiment. Let me try Haze Light with <coughs> almost 70%. Let's, let's go to this screen region. Let's actually save this and open it up. So I can open up the drawing. Let's go to the screen region, right? All of that. And then let's pick up this blue color. Look at this. See that? See that color? Right, let's pick a darker color. You, know, you see that? Sort of like a blending effect, isn't it? So, so we can see if that would work for the trees that are showing, you know, like like Ferdinand. I keep calling him George Surratt. I don't know why. So let's go to another brush. I think I used another brush, which I quite like. It was actually Lane. Let's have a look at Lane. Okay. See that? That actually creates a line horizontal in a different direction, which we don't want. Right? Okay, let's pick a, a meadow. That's not bad. Is that going well? Yes, I think that might work. Let's try meadow. Okay, so I'm going to try the meadow. And I'm going to do a portion of drawing, which, where do you think I should do it? Let's do it on the left side here. This air group of trees, okay? And let me use this meadow with small brush 3.7. Right, so I'm going to use, let's go to 80%. So I'm just trying to get these colors. It's hard to tell if I've got anything right here, but I'm going to first do these, these colors and see if managed to pull anything up. Right, trying to get these additional tones that this, you know, trying to just go over these areas that are have these dark patches and light patches. Right, and then using the color picker to give that kind of a texture, so I'm developing the texture. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Right, so I'm going to go up here. Just keep continuing. See that green now, you can see there's a little bit of that tree and then if it doesn't work we'll change the setting a little bit there see that dark area i think we may need to change the setting again but let's see what it looks like that hasn't really done anything so let's do a 100 percent see if that can make a difference right Let's do that. I think that's also going to have a little impact on this. Because that's what I'm thinking. Yep, it's not really doing it. So I'm going to go to Haze Dark. Keep it at 100% for now. Let's try Haze Dark. Right, let's do this top of that tree, right? That seems to be quite powerful, isn't it? So 
Yes, seems very powerful. Seems like it's it wants to apply the colors, you know. Let's get that white patch here. See if we can get a close resemblance to it. I'm not trying to get exact, but a close resemble resemblance. So I might have to change the opacity if it's too strong, but let's see what we have here. Hmm. I think what we're going to need to do is take it down, and that might work. So I'm going to go ahead and do this really quickly. I'm going to take it up 2%. I can, don't want to spend all day. So I'm going to pick these tones. Do you see them? So this is just showing you. Just picking these tones. You see I'm sort of finding these dark light tones, just going over them with that. 2% brush. In a way, what it's doing is it's adding these textures. Oops, what happened there? Almost seemed like someone else was drawing here. See that here? That here? So if we get this right and sort of the effect is similar, then I can carry on using this, right? Look at that different tones. This really expands your knowledge of not just knowledge, but your whole notion of what tones are. This is really key to... Look at this one. Eh? So in, in a way, as we do this, we are also fixing the tones that's that low level, right? Then that tones there, and then there's a green, the green bit here, yep. Just capture that, get that yellow tone. Right, just do that. You can see the tones that have been missing with the broad colors that we did. Now we can get all these tones. See that? You can see I'm just trying to follow the mark. See this here? Yes. If you work with speed, you can really get this finished. See, this is, you're beginning to see what the tiny details are now, right? So you can even draw this line here, right, and then take this all the way. Maybe we've created the style of our own, we don't know. Right. I'm going to see that to see what it looks like and then if it works, I'm just going to carry on and not change the brush. So remember, we've got an underlying color already, so we don't have to do too much work of trying to get it perfect. Got an underlying tone.
Let's have a look. It's not bad, is it? Yes, it's doing, I think it's quite not too bad at all. I'm going to keep that. Just carry on here. Yeah? Look at these. Just that's it. You yeah, know that was actually yellow, but so we can fix that. Okay, because we're not making a complete rendition. We just see how we're actually applying the techniques we've learned to this painting. If it works, then why not, right? Because I don't want... I'm laying down the first tones. Seen on the left how we've managed to change it. I think that's working, but we have a lot to do, a lot to cover. I'm going to save it. I don't know what this app is doing right now. Just giving the illusion of details. Right, you don't want to spend too much time in working because we've got a lot of areas to cover. Oh, come on. Why is it doing that? Right there, see that? That's what color is that? See that here? So just applying these tiny details of color. Remember, they use the foundation as a means to lay down the first colors so it's easier to put down the top colors so most of the artwork people show on youtube are all just showcased to show off their skills nothing more really but here you can really get down and make a good drawing yourself Right, no special skills required. Let's see, this is where we went wrong, isn't it? Can fix that easily. Okay. There. Just get these little tiny elements here. And just keep following it. Just add more and more. Textures, that's what we're doing, textures. Remember what I explained to you about you move away from the canvas, you see a fine painting and you move, get closer. You can't tell if that was a face or a blooming cart, dog or whatever. Right? That's the illusion of detail. That's what most artists know very well. And the, and the 
may take it to their advantage. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Let me have a bit of a blue here. Seems to be all right, isn't it? The left side. Now let's do the right side. Okay. Let's go ahead and speed up and do the right side really quick. Right, the areas where you see needs touching up. You know the black. Use that as your guide. In the William Turner's painting, we did a line drawing of the boat, and we used that as a guide. You know. So by doing these, you're really creating another layer of colours and automatically adding these shades. Yeah, that's all you're doing. Nothing complicated. Right, you're picking these, adding these shades, right, giving it texture. What are you doing? Use. I can get away with that, why not? And follow the little strokes, like the trees are jetting up. So try and stick to that. Could quite easily use another brush. Let's, uh, Just basically just creating another layer of textures. All right, that's all it is. Mishmash of colours. Let's have a look. It's looking better, isn't it? Much better. So I like this method. In fact, uh, I'm gonna try and get rid of these. All right. Right. Just use a dark colour if you have to. And let's get rid of these black. And these change the colour around. You probably worked on a let's get rid of this and see what happens. Oh, see these little dots? Let's try to get rid of them. See, just giving it texture. So we can actually, this sort of brings me to the point that I could probably, instead of following the the rules of the game, I could actually use my own brush strokes to bring in some texture and we could do that, I think. I think that's what we'll do. First, let me get this bunch of the white, you know. Let's have a look. Yeah, that seems to be working. <coughs> so, I think we have Let's try and pick this. Let's try and pick the right some of the green. And just because we're gonna go fast, so I'm using the same green. Right. 
So now I'm actually completely on my drawing canvas, adding these additional textures. And then we can decide. So instead of doing a complete trace, I'm actually using my own drawing canvas and doing it outright. So you could argue that this is your own creative style that you're trying to project on this drawing that you've done so far. Well, which it is, isn't it? Right. Let's pick another colour. A blue, maybe. Let's pick a this colour. Be careful with that lighter colour because that could see I'm going very sparingly with the light colour. Because it's not quite it's very light and contrasty. Let's have a look. This is looking good, isn't it? And then what we can do is keep going to that mountain. Look at that beautiful mountain. So what we can do is pick some of these colours, the blue, and add right, textures. And then pick some of that dark and add it to the neighbouring region that to give that texture. All right, let's see what we have here. And then the same thing. Just add these textures. Use different colours. Right? To add bodies of texture. Even down there, right? That's it. And then look at that line there, it's a wonderful line here. Not just... Right, so that's what we're doing is, we're taking the opportunity to, right, add details. So here we're adding textures, and then we can pick a different colour here. Or the blue color and then carry it to the neighboring region and then we can say what's going on here it's got a nice dark region Okay, we could do that. Could apply our own. And then he's got this. And like a... Right, so just put the textures in there. Right. And then bring a colour in there and just add the textures. And then I got the green. I could put some of the green here. Yeah. Right, let's see what we have here. It's getting better, isn't it? And now we can say, well, we think we need to address this right part. Let's have a look what he's got here. He's got sort of a mountain range going on with all these little colours. So we'll do the same. That's almost probably where the goats. So possibly pick a neighboring color. Well, the goats are grazing, I think. All these add to the beauty of this. Right there. 
And now what have we got here? Oh, we got a lovely mountain here. Right there, just going to the back. Right there. What have we got here? We've got another dark, dark region here. What we have here, we've got that. So we did, overdid it with that, but that's all right. Right there. And on the top, got that wonderful mountain. This reminds me of Mona Lisa's when you did the back. Not too much detail, but just enough to keep you guessing. Okay, let's do that. And if you don't like it, take it away. What have we got here? Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? And now we can see. I'm going to take my mind and move down here into the valley here, closer to the valley. Do the same thing. Right. Same thing, just take away those whites. Right. Right, because you don't see such whites, do you? And then the same thing here. Pick a different color like this. There'll be little spots, specks that adds to the whole painting. Let's see what that looks like. That's just looking good, isn't it? You never thought we could come this far, did you? But we're really doing well in time-wise. Because, you know, I love landscapes. And I will, I will try my best to get some things good. You know. There. Okay, so we've got this wonderful vista. And now we can see that we need to do something with that sky. I'm going to do something a little. I'm going to blend it. So here, I'm thinking I'm going to blend it with the line brush. I'm not going to move back to the line. Sorry, the line brush. Actually, let's save it first. So we don't want to lose that. And then with the line brush, I'm going to take the density down, because I've done this before. Take it up, and then I'm going to just blend this. Okay. There. And what I did? Pick that colour. Just blend it. If I reduce a little tad a bit more. And then increase that, actually. I just go here. Get the illusion of a cloud, isn't it? I think that's what he was intending, isn't it? Okay. And then with the yellow white, we could just blend that. Could mix the, make sure that the, there's none of that, you know, that edge, sharp edge. We're going to get rid of that. So using a circular stroke. Oh, 
right and then try to take that color and meld it into that take this lovely color and then take some of this color and take that meld it onto that and look now we can see what it looks like right composition take this color What does it look like? It's not looking as well as I would like. So I'm going to do something with that. And I'm going to take this to a little bit bigger. Right there. You know, not... not such a line there. What's that? Yes. And then take it down. So look at the whole composition and see what the tools needs to be done, yeah? How the tools need to be used here. Yeah? And I'll take that. Yeah. I think that's looking good, isn't it? And now, you know what I want to do? I'm going to save it and open it up again. And then I'm going to do some of the light colors there. A little bit of that light tone just here using the same line brush just put in some tones there look at that and then carry on this blending exercise blend a bit you would have loved to have used these digital tools. There, can you see us? I blended it. Right, giving a distance. Giving it more of a diffused look to the whole scene. Right? Like it's far away. Right? there. You can use this tones to spread it around. So now you can see we're fixing it. Look, this brown, you come down to the fields. Uh, just stretch it up. Okay, 5%. And then we can take this color and go into here. Why not? Well, because I've got that blending effect. And then maybe pick some of that color and just make it a little lighter. And you have the option of right, giving the illusion. See that here? There. That one as well. And then pick the light color, just let it diffuse. Right, giving it some characteristic. And what about taking it, finishing it off with some of these colors? Oh, that's quite Alright, so let's take some of this colors. The 
hard. So play around with it. You know, don't be afraid. Play around with it. And play around with this density. Add textures. Reduce the size. Pick these colors. Pick any color. Just carry it into these areas and give it more substance. There. There. Use your judgment. Best judgment. No, so here I'm just using this tiny, the dark color I've got here, and just not too much because you don't want to don't want to change the composition. Do pick another color. Just Let's bring it down here. It's all adding details to the whole thing. And then here we could do this color and then take it down and show that they're pebbles, right? There. And then some different different colors. And take it down if you have to. Because there's some tiny details right there. Just give the illusion of detail right there. Look at that. Just give, throw a little something there. Because you know, it's never never so real and natural I mean it's never so perfect so that's the beauty of the black there you know even add a little bit of black uh, we know that some black should be added there we know that Oops, move that way, please. There, you know? You got that. Oh, and maybe add a little bit of light as well. Who knows? Like here. Yeah. Add a bit of light. It's a reflected. There, maybe it's a streak of. This is where children play with them when it's snowing perhaps you know they slide down this and a little bit of all right you know what i think i'm done what do you think you know, do you think it could do better? I'd like to see it, so please do post your drawings in the community. See how we change the sky? I think it looks better than his sky, isn't it? But he's got a mountain scene at the back. But I think we've done a better job on the sky, at least, yeah. So there it is. Ferdinand, and we did it in record time as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually sign this. Just pick a dark color and then sign it here. Paintology. There it is. So I hope you have really enjoyed it as much as I have painting it. And you can see how you can make paintings, showing you the reference image. You can go a lot more with this. I, I'm pretty sure you can keep adding, taking away, saving it, 
if you're not happy saving and then op opening up the previous, sorry, image and then drawing it. But I have never done this painting. I just applied some skills, you know, similar simple skills. They're not complicated and uh, hopefully you can give it a shot. So uh, please subscribe and I'll see you for another session tomorrow and give me some ideas as well, feedback. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.